Good morning. It's Wednesday, September the 2nd, and this is The Drill. Thank you very much. Welcome to all the butchers, bakers, and candlestick makers out there. I'm Ron, your host, and the only true conservative in the United States today. Who is the false conservative? The false conservative is pragmatic. He does not know how to and refuses to say no. He's the man that feigns moral neutrality. He is non-judgmental. He is impulsive. He's the man that's obsessed with being current. He thinks that he is conservative because of his position on the issues. He refuses to change or correct his mistakes. He is movement-oriented and thinks that to defeat the left, you must think and act like the left. The false conservative is idealistic. Examples of false conservatives are George W. Bush, Mitt Romney, and Susan Collins. What happens after Donald Trump? Who then? If our culture continues to move to the left as as has been doing for the past 50 years, then at some point, elections will be meaningless. If true conservatives can restore our culture, then politics will take care of itself. My podcast is short, approximately 5 to 10 minutes long, because shorter podcasts are easier to download and listen to. The biggest socio-political influences in my life are my parents, my teachers, Ayn Rand, and Dr. Mortimer Adler. My podcast is made available through Spreaker and can be heard on iTunes, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. Today, where do we stand? Quote of the day, good news, how can a true conservative win, and how to think about President Obama. All that when I come back. Thank you, thank you. Where do we stand? Los Angeles Clippers coach Doc Rivers and I are apparently the only two people in America who recognize the destructiveness of police unions. No law enforcement union has yet been decertified and no laws shielding officers from prosecution have been repealed. This means that the law enforcement unions continue their inherently corrupting influence over our civilization. Decertify police unions now. New York Times v. Sullivan continues to be the law of the land, and for-profit news is the current paradigm, so news people continue to be super-citizens, enjoying extra rights and less responsibility than the average taxpayer. Down with NYTV Sullivan and non-profit news now. Jill, uh, Jill Biden is still the evilest woman in America for encouraging her husband's campaign to continue. The Biden-Harris campaign is designed to mock the Constitution, the rule of law, the president, the election process, and the American people, and make a fool out of Mr. Biden in the process. Thanks to the incompetence or malfeasance of the Chinese communist government, the communist flu continues, but the amount of new cases is dropping. Businesses and schools continue to be locked down in defiance of the wishes and the will of the American people and the testimony of relevant specialists. And the outlaws in Portland and elsewhere have continued their violent ways. The Senate and the House have returned from August recess and are resuming negotiations on a relief bill. And the president has courageously signed four executive orders to provide unemployment extension and eviction relief. When I come back, the quote of the day. Thank you, thank you. The quote of the day comes from dailyscripture.net. Lord Jesus Christ, you have all power to heal and to deliver. There is no trouble nor bondage you cannot overcome. Set me free to serve you joyfully and to love and serve others generously. May nothing hinder me from giving myself wholly to you and to your service. Amen. Remember that we have free will and that we are moral agents. Coming up, Good news. Thank you. The good news is that President Trump is projected to get 362 electoral votes and Joe Biden 176 electoral votes, giving the president a 91% chance of re-election. 
The model that predicts this victory has been correct in the last 24 of 26 presidential elections, including the 2016 election. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has struck down a California law banning high-capacity magazines as being in violation of the Second Amendment to the Constitution. The Trump administration has brokered a peace accord between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. Attorney General Barr and Senator Lindsey Graham continue to conduct a thorough investigation into the treasonous behavior of former FBI Director Comey and his co-conspirators. Police in the L.A. region announced dozens of arrests and ongoing pursuit of suspects from summer summer rioting. The Los Angeles Zoo reopens 166 days after after the pandemic shutdown. Perhaps the best piece of good news is that toilet paper is back on the shelves. Not only toilet paper, but rice, soup, paper towels, and bleach as well. Rush Limbaugh is still broadcasting and is successfully beating late-stage lung cancer, and the stock market is up. Up next, how can a true conservative win? Thank you. How can a true conservative win? By being realistic. When you engage the socialist in conversation, you will frequently be asked by the socialist to fantasize about a particular scenario. For instance, he may ask you to tell him what you would say to the President of the United States if you happen to run into him, or what you would do if you hit the lottery. The socialist is trying to get you to acknowledge the primacy of consciousness. Don't do it. Stay realistic. Since you are not going to run into the president and you are unlikely to win the lottery, such conversations are ridiculous. Instead, tell the lefty what you would say to your congressional representative. Tell him what you would do if you came into extra money from, say, a class action lawsuit, or what you plan to do with the stimulus check that you are waiting for. By being realistic, you are telling the socialist that existence is primary, not consciousness, And in so doing, you are being a true conservative and not just a voting booth conservative. Coming up, how to think about President Obama. Thank you. There are a lot of voting booth conservatives that have been saying that former President Obama is the worst president that the American people have ever had. False. Let's look at the facts. Fact, 9-11 happened during the President Bush's term. Fact, President Obama brought Osama bin Laden to justice. Fact, the biggest economic debacle in American history, the 2008 Depression, happened on George W. Bush's watch. Fact, President Obama rescued the world's economy from this cataclysmic event, creating and maintaining a 1% growth rate for the duration of his presidency. Fact, President Obama rescued Captain Phelps and his crew from Somali pirates. Fact, former President Bush sent troops into Iraq. Afghanistan, yes, but Iraq? I'm still trying to figure that one out. So to sum up, George Bush created the problems and President Obama solved them. That means that President Obama is one of the best presidents we've ever had, and George Bush is the worst president since Jimmy Carter. Think about it. Back in a minute. Who is the true conservative? He's the person that has the courage of his convictions and is confident in what he knows. He is the person that understands that culture trumps politics. He's not selfish, but minds his own business. He acts like an adult. He is patriotic and uses common sense. He makes judgments, refuses to speculate, speaks clearly and definitively, and is not afraid to say no. He's open-minded asking why rather than why not. He's consistent, credible, and influential, not ashamed of his existence, unafraid to learn or correct his mistakes. He is a normal American, and he is better than the socialist. He's a better friend, father, brother, family member, and a better person, period. You have to know that. If you don't know with every fiber of your being that being a true conservative is best, then you're wasting your time. 
And that concludes another episode of The Drill. Be honest, be smart, be beautiful, and always ask yourself, what is real, how do I know, and what should I do about it? I'm Ron, and that's The Drill.